All right, have the side panels bolted to the front panel. Got the front panel bolted to the bumper, crash bar, whatever you want to call it on these Corvettes. And I need to put one more in up in this area into the frame rail, but I'm going to hold off just a minute. I want to fit the pressure tube that comes from where the blow off valve is in here. I want to make sure that this opening, I've, you know, that I haven't done something wrong and I, um, in case I have to move it front to back a little bit to clear that hose without rubbing. Next up, we're mounting the intercooler. You find the bag that's got the parts for the intercooler and loosely attach the L bracket to the intercooler with the long side on the uh, intercooler. The short side's gonna go against the frame of the car. There's some instructions on a &A's website, but basically I had an assistant, I held it up, and I put some tape where I knew it was gonna be based on the pictures on the website. And I held it up in place and uh, made sure everything lined up. And I had my assistant trace the little slot from that L bracket on each side here. So now I'm gonna drill an eighth inch hole right in the middle of that little slot to give me the maximum amount of adjustability. If it's not quite right, uh, you've got a slot to work with. Okay, I drilled the eighth inch holes in the tape, removed the tape, and then used the self-tapping screws to attach the brackets. Now I'm going to hold the intercooler up and have my assistant start the screws that are in the top of the intercooler. Through the magic of video, there's the intercooler installed. Here's the view from underneath the car. And if you can see in that corner where the weld is on the intercooler, it kind of matches up in the bend on the aluminum front panel. The little gap you see there, I'll probably just fill that in with a little uh, silicone or something to keep all the air that's going to get pushed up in this little area has to go through the intercooler. So, intercooler is installed. Let's move on to some of the plumbing, I believe. To gain access here, we're underneath the car, under the passenger side front. We have to remove five bolts, seven millimeters to get this little access panel removed. Then we're gonna remove this 13 millimeter to take the horns off. Disconnect the wiring, and we're gonna have to modify these brackets, I guess, to relocate the horn to make room for some of the uh, intake piping. Okay, the ANA instructions require us to do a couple mods to the horn bracket. This little tab is bent 90 degree um, when it comes off the car, we just bend it flat so it goes straight across because we're going to be relocating where this mounts. Uh, we drill this hole out to a 21 64th, and then we just take and we flip flop these horns. And I've already done that. So, you know, what was it? We just unbolt them from the back here and just switch them one side for the other. All right, finishing up underneath the front end. So, essentially, the radiator support, what holds the radiator, is this little skid frame assembly that we've all hit on the curbs before. And we're, we're lowering it like three quarters of an inch, I think, to give more room for the air intake up by the supercharger. And you basically drop all four bolts, not at the same time. You can see the other one right there. There's two on each side. Uh, you drop, you loosen the ones on the driver's side, and then you take the ones out on the pa passenger side. Um, the horn bracket that we modified, we stick the horn back in here. Make sure you tilt the horns so that if moisture gets in there, the water wants to run out rather than run into the horn. That will destroy the horn. Um, we also had to relocate, I think this is the ambient, just the air temperature sensor. It was... Uh, I don't even remember where it was, but it gets relocated to this hole right here inside of the skid frame. Um, this looks like, I, I was thinking, and here's the, here is the driver's side. There's one there and one up here. And this part here is, I think, buttoned up as far as uh, relocating the skid frame slash radiator support. Next step here is to plumb from the bottom of the intercooler. This is the passenger side. 
So I loosened this up, dropped this down, connected the hose. Um, I don't have a picture of it now, but it's in the directions. Connected this one here. It comes around under the, in, this is in front of the passenger side front tire. And what you have to do is trim a hole in the fiberglass wheel well to allow for this. Uh, I used, again, a cutoff wheel and a die grinder to get that cut. And this is lining up pretty good. I'm going to want to watch out for when I, I'm going to relocate at least this one here because I don't want the sharp pointy screw to be tearing a hole in my the, uh, the, the pressure hose. And this one here, I'm going to put in a shorter screw. It's, it's quite a ways away from the hose, but I'm going to put in a shorter one just to minimize the risk of any chance of it cutting that hose under flexation or something like that. So we're going to continue on. We're going to add uh, the blow-off valve now and see if we can get it, that all to fit in this cavity. Okay, we've got the blow-off valve on attached to this tubing with the T. Um, went pretty uneventful. Other than I'm not a fan of, there's a, one of the screws originally goes here and a pointy head little uh, sheet metal screw comes up pretty close to that silicone tube. So I moved it over here. This is one that holds on the um, wind deflector. There's one right here. It's pretty close. Uh, I substituted a shorter screw just for a little bit of safety in case this were to ever move materially. I couldn't really find anything to do for this one. It comes up right underneath the blow-off valve. So I just put a machine screw with a flat head up here and I'm going to screw it on from the bottom with a lock washer. It'll be hidden by the air dam anyway. But I just couldn't, I didn't want to risk putting a sheet metal screw up into this area. And um, there is also, they showed up one right here. But again, that's too close to the silicone tube as far as I'm concerned. And so I just moved it up here and I just had to modify the bottom piece that goes on. I modified it so that I can put the screw through higher. So I'll totally miss that tube. So maybe yours would end up a little different than mine here. Um, but just be cognizant of all the little screws and the location of the hoses and make sure you don't put a screw through your hose. Okay, everything's buttoned up down here. Hoses like this, it's easy to see if you've got them on far enough uh, past the kind of the dimple and the aluminum coupler. But as you get underneath the vehicle and you connect this one, it's a little more challenging to be able to see exactly how far and feel exactly how far you've got the rubber pushed over the dimple. I think I've got it far enough and I couldn't push this any further because it gets pretty close to rubbing on the cradle. So so close in fact that I took a piece of rubber hose and split it down the middle and attached it to the cradle here. So if it is going to make contact as the motor flexes as you're running through the gears or whatever, it should be rubber on rubber. Uh, if it was aluminum on rubber, I think the aluminum would win and I'd be a little more concerned. So just be really careful. You can see it also kind of bumps up against the sway bar, but that's a smooth metal, so there's no sharp edges there. It's a tight fit. I mean, that's no doubt about it. But if you've ever looked underneath the hood of a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, there's tons of room in this car. So just be really careful when you're routing these hoses. Look for anything sharp. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, some of these bolts that attach the uh, bottom, bottom part here to the fender well, anything that's going to come in contact with the blow-off valve or um, the rubber hose, that's behind here, make sure you're you're not penetrating into there. So just be cognizant of those sorts of things. We're up top now plumbing the connection from the inner cooler to the throttle body. Take a good look at the hose. It's also in the instructions. Make sure you got it on the right way. I'm going to fit at this point in time the mass airflow sensor <clears throat> and you do need to grind this little tab off. Again, I'll use a die grinder, excuse me, a cutoff wheel so the hose will slide all the way up and fit nice against this ridge. So let's see if we can connect the mass airflow sensor in between the throttle body and the aluminum elbow to the intercooler. Okay, I've spent a considerable amount of time getting the charge tube from the intercooler to fit properly to the mass airflow sensor. Um, the key component here, and I had I actually had to call Josh, and he hooked me up with Jesse at ANA, one of their lead techs. And the key is making sure this rubber tube that comes off the intercooler 
when you mount it that you bend it back before you tighten it to make sure that it's about a quarter of an inch or less from the AC condenser. And then from there, you want to make it as straight of a shot as you can into the mass airflow sensor.